Hey, church family, we're here for our updates and devotions. As far as updates, you may have heard the Governor Lee's press conference today. He is not going to extend the stay-at-home order beyond April 30th as of now. Now, what that means is there's going to be a partial opening of businesses, and we're still going to have to do some social distancing. So, you know, the way you enter Walmart, things like that, is probably not going to change starting May 1st. And we don't know how that's going to impact church services, what they're going to say, how they're going to do that, whether we need to have two services to make our crowd smaller, whether we need to meet partially in the sanctuary, part of us in the gym, and um, watch a video in one of those areas of the service. We're not sure yet. So you may want to ask me lots of questions, and my answers are probably going to be, I don't know. We are going to have to wait and see just a little bit. We still plan on having services online again this week, but we are praying about how we can start phasing in meeting together again and uh, how we can stay within the guidelines, but also um, not forsake the assembling together. So we are going to be changing how we do church and how we meet um, beginning in May. So we don't know how that's going to look right yet, but it will look different than we are doing now. We are going to start meeting some, whether it's small groups, Bible studies that we meet throughout the week, whatever it may be, um, things will be changing here soon. And as soon as we're able to give you more definite, we will be doing that. So, But pray, commit to pray during this time what God would have us to do to glorify Him in our community. And every church is different. And I just want to remind you that God uses each church differently. So what he has for us may not be what he has for another church. So we need to pray what God wants us specifically to do for his glory in Franklin County in the area. So that is your updates. Now for our devotions, we are continuing in Proverbs. We're looking at Proverbs chapter 6, verses 16 through 19. So let's read that together. Beginning in verse 16, it says, The Lord hates six things. In fact, seven are detestable to him. Arrogant eyes, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that plots wicked schemes, feet eager to run to evil, a lying witness who gives false testimony, and one who stirs up trouble among brethren. See, today what we're going to do is we're going to get a glimpse into things that does not please God. Yes, God is not happy with everything we do. In case you haven't um, paid attention to that, but there are things in Scripture in which God says, look, these things I hate. These things I find detestable. These things are not right. Why are they not right? Why are these things that, why is there things that God hates? Because of sin. Sin is into the world. And see, God is holy and perfect and glorious. But not everything we do is holy and glorious. And God loves righteousness. God loves glorious things. God loves the things that are holy. And God himself has defined what is holy and what is unholy. And here again, we see God revealing to us through Solomon seven things that are unholy. These things upset God, all right? Now, we're going to start first with six things that God hates in this list. First, we have the arrogant eyes. Now, arrogant eyes, what we do is we mask that. Okay, today, we use words like, oh, they just have ambition, or I'm just ambitious, or I am just overly confident. Um, arrogant eyes is basically someone who is proud, who is arrogant, who is boastful. Yes, am ambition can be good, and confidence can be good, but we can also use those negatively. And here, God is talking about when you become arrogant and prideful, and you think of yourself more highly than you should or you think you're better than you are. That's what he's talking about here, someone who is arrogant. Then he goes on to lying tongue. Well, that's pretty self-explanatory. Um, now, we, sometimes what we do is we justify our lying. We call it, well, it's just a little white lie. Remember, lying is on God's list here. Things he hates. He hates lying. Even the little, little lies that we tell that we somehow sweep under the rug or we justify, God does not justify them. He does not like them. Then, hands that shed innocent blood, taking advantage of the innocent. God does not like that. When I think of taking advantage of the innocent, I can't help but to think of human trafficking and children. How deplorable that is. God hates that. God hates it when people take advantage of the innocent. Then we go on here and he says, a heart that plots wicked schemes. Now, we may think like, well, I don't do that. But the problem is, is that have you ever, I don't know what we, what I'll call is, 
premeditated sin. Have you ever considered something like, oh, wow, this is wrong, but I'm going to do it anyway. That's what he's talking about here. Someone who knows something that is wrong, you think through it, and then you do it. And I think we're guilty of that from time to time if we're honest with ourselves. Then he goes on, feet, they're eager to run to evil. Um, you ever have those times where maybe you're quick to sin, but you're slow to worship? That's what he's talking about here. People, they're just quick. I mean, every chance they get, man, they just run and they're just doing something wrong. You ever see those people on Facebook? I feel like Facebook has just turned into this drama board, right? Where you get on there and be like, oh, my life is so hard. This has happened again. And I'm like, well, look at where you're going. Look at what you're doing. What do you expect? When you're always running to evil, man, just bad things happen. And God hates it that his children continuously run to evil. Then, we see here next, number six, lying witness who gives false testimony. Now, how is this different than the second one, a lying tongue? Well, here, this one is when people mislead. You ever have people tell partial truths or, well, I didn't technically lie. That's what he's talking about here. Someone who misleads you with their testimony. They may not necessarily outright, they may get on a technicality. Oh, I didn't technically lie, but you withheld some truth. That would have changed outlooks. God hates that. God just wants you to be honest and trustworthy. Then the seventh thing. See, here he says six things he hates, but the seventh, my translation here says detestable. Other translations will say abhors. Basically, the seventh thing here on this list, God needed a word stronger than hate. He's like, yeah, I hate these things, but beyond hate is how I feel about the seventh thing. And what's the seventh thing? One who stirs up trouble among brethren, or that word trouble can be dissension, one who causes dissension or causes arguments. Now, being in ministry all these years, I have seen this in the church time and time again. Too many people are gossips and busy buddies, and all they do is stir up trouble all the time, and they, they want to cause problems, or they always have things to complain about or different things like that. Have you ever met people like that? You ever worked with people like that before? They're just always stirring things up. Well, God abhors those who stir up things, especially among the brethren, especially among his people, his church. God abhors it. See, we are to be people of peace and of unity, especially within the church. So what we need to be doing is we need to be asking ourselves, how am I promoting peace and unity within the church? Don't cause problems amongst each other. Let's not be divided. Let's be unified, glorifying God. So those are seven things that God has a problem with. So what do we do? Well, we need to be the opposite of those seven things, right? So we need to be humble. We need to be honest. We need to be gentle. We need to be pure. We need to be righteous. We need to be truthful. And we need to be unifiers. Now, that may seem like a tall list, to see, all of that is possible through Christ. Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Through Christ, you can be someone who is humble, honest, gentle, pure, righteous, truthful, and a unifier. I pray that you rely upon Christ because he is the source of all our righteousness. Have a great evening, and I look forward to talking with you again tomorrow.